Did you know that an estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year? That is such a lose-lose situation for you and the planet. Blueland is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastic by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and the planet with the same powerful clean you're used to. They offer refillable cleaning products with a beautiful, cohesive design that looks great on your counters. You'll never have to grab bulky cleaning supplies on your grocery run again. I seriously love all the products from the cleaning sprays to hand soap, toilet bowl cleaner, and laundry tablets. The other day, my cleaner Lou, shout out as I know he listens, even commented on how good these products work. So professional house cleaner approved too. Blue Land has a special offer for listeners. Right now, get 15% off your first order by going to blueland.com slash datable. You don't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash datable for 15% off. That's blueland.com slash datable to get 15% off. Hello, Datables. Happy start to the summer. We are offering a flash promo on our Meeting People IRL Masterclass from now until July 9th to celebrate America's birthday and mine. So to kick off summer strong, if you've been thinking about joining the Masterclass or want to find out more info, visit datablepodcast.com slash programs or go to the link in the show notes and make sure to use code DATABLE for $10 off. That's datablepodcast.com slash programs with code DATABLE for $10 off. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. It's time for Brunch Talk. Welcome to a new episode of Brunch Talk and happy Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. You know, I feel like I normally don't schedule in advance, but because I was away last week, I did all my due diligence, scheduled everything a week in advance, and then fucked up the date. I don't think anybody <laughs> noticed. And if you noticed and you got brunch talk released to you on Saturday, I don't think anybody <laughs> would mind that because people also get brunch on Saturdays. Yeah. Just early so brunch last week. You know, we're yeah. back to our back to our normal normally scheduled programming but if you happen to see the brunch talk early you know we might just leave it for you if this happens again (laughs) we had one listener one of our moderators tony was like i'm gonna listen before they realize because i also like didn't write the blurb and (laughs) he's like i'm gonna listen quick before they realize and take it down and i'm like i love that you're so on it it makes me so happy that's when you (laughs) feel like you're in the know right when you get an episode released early and there's like a cryptic (laughs) description of it and you think "Ooh, it's a secret episode (laughs) the best part is ua like messaged me and she's like is there a reason that brunch talk went out (laughs) early this week we have an episode that went live today (laughs) design and i had the worst reception because i was in the middle of nowhere and i was like i could barely have any conversation like anything you could do to fix this while (laughs) until i'm back to civilization (laughs) would be phenomenal Uh, either way it all it all worked out and there you go subscribe and follow us because you never know if you're gonna get an episode a day exactly. early or maybe a day later you never we are keeping you on your yeah, toes we're just keeping you on your toes exactly it's all by design not error no way <laughs> oh, anyways but- what i love about this brunch talk it spiraled from last brunch talk and mm-hmm. that's i think in my opinion the best way to keep these topics rolling is mm-hmm. when you hear something have another revelation send us an email and then we're ready to go you know this is just keep the convo going and we realize that the more we do these the more questions you will have Mm -hmm. because it it kind of jogs your memory of oh yeah i remember kind of thinking about this or and so it's good we're here for you all this is why we're doing this on a (laughs) weekly basis so we can capture these questions in a timely manner and again you can always email us or send us a dm on um, social media like instagram for example at Dateable Podcast. Should we get into the question? Is this? Is Let's this, get into it. We set Let's it up already. It. Okay, we set it up. You know, we might as well. <laughs> a question I've pondered many a times. The question is: <laughs> Is there such a thing as the one? Oof. 
Yes, we've all pondered this one. But for more context, the listener wrote in and said, this is my first real relationship. I feel as if I have nothing to benchmark it to. And the best thing I can do is compare them to my friends' relationships. I don't think I'm afraid of starting over which was our episode last week, but more afraid of losing a good thing just because of my curiosity in the future. Mm. Yeah. How do you know if you're with the one (laughs) when you don't have anybody to compare this person against or any other relationships to compare this against? And my first inkling is to say the one doesn't come prepackaged. You can't just Mm -hmm. like walk into a store and there's an aisle called the one and you just say, (laughs) I'll pick the purple one. It doesn't happen like that. The one is created in a relationship so in that question is does the one exist the one exists when you create that with someone but knowing if you are with the one or not it gets a little tricky when you don't have a benchmark and I I feel like I've been there with my high school boyfriend because I was so in love with him I felt like he was a one but I didn't know I was like a little 17 year old right but I think At the end of the day, if you know what love is, because it's not just romantic love. We had an episode with Sydney from The Bachelor, Mm -hmm. and she hasn't been in a relationship before, and she is engaged to someone, like her first boyfriend, right? And Mm -hmm. she said her benchmark was just feeling the love in her life from family and friends and benchmarking against that with her current relationship. And that's when she knew that he would be the one for her. And yeah, I think we always talk about just because you haven't had a romantic relationship doesn't mean that you don't have relationship experience. We all have relationship experience and pulling from that and understanding what you like and what makes you feel good and what you can relate to in all types of relationships is helpful to also provide that benchmark if you would like that. Mm -hmm. I definitely used to believe very much in the one Mm -hmm. and I think it was more of this feeling maybe because I'm a romantic (laughs) but also just because like that's what you're taught right is You find this person. And even if you're searching for one person, like if you are monogamous and you're looking for this person to spend your life with, that doesn't have to equate to the one. And I think for so long, I mixed that up. And then once I actually found that person and it didn't work out for years, I like had it in my head that this was still the person. Yeah. So I think the one is actually kind of dangerous because if you think you found it and it doesn't work out, like you can really get stuck. So I love this idea that there are many ones. There's not just Mm -hmm. one. You don't find love, you create love. And I think the reality is, and you know, this is really scary sometimes to say out loud, we don't know what the future is going to bring with any relationship, even if you've had hundreds of relationships before, like, yeah, you still don't know what the future is going to bring for whatever current one you're in. You know, maybe you fall out of love. Maybe someone gets ill. Like it might not even be uh, an issue of it wasn't the right match. Like there's so mm-hmm. much in life that could happen. So I really feel like all you can judge on is how do I feel today? Do I yeah. feel like this person brings out the best side of me? Do I feel loved and cherished by this person? Do I feel good around them? Do I feel good about myself? Do I feel safe? Do I feel secure? Like all the things that you want in a relationship, do I feel it? And if the answer is yes, then I think you actually have something pretty freaking awesome and rare. And sometimes it's really hard to know, but hopefully, (laughs) I don't want to like say you should like take solstice and like your friends like bad dating life, but hearing other people share their like dating horror stories, listening to this podcast, different things that people would kind of kill for your situation. I think just because you don't have a benchmark doesn't mean that you need to get rid of that. Of course, if you're feeling unsatisfied or unfulfilled, then that's a totally different scenario. But if things are good, but you're just like, is this the best? Is this the one? Mm. Then I think that's a slippery slope because everyone's going to have a fault. No one is going to be perfect. And there's always going to be some conflict regardless of who you're with. There's this notion, I guess, that's been created by Hollywood is that get this feeling all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. like I'm with the one, this must be the person for me. And some of us, it does happen that way. And for Mm -hmm. most of us, I would argue it does not happen that (laughs) way. It does take time and it does take going through life 
with someone to know if you are with the right person. I know we often joke about Mr. Right versus Mr. Right Now, but I think the Mr. Right Now mentality is the right mentality. Like you were saying, yeah. Julie, it's like you only have control over what you're feeling and going through today. You have no idea what the future holds. So if you're feeling like this is right right now, it is right for you. The problem with the one is that people feel like they put a lot of pressure on their relationship thinking, oh, I've been with this person for X amount of years or X amount of months. I should have this feeling already. But a relationship is like a plant. You can't just watch a plant and expect it to grow without Mm -hmm. tending to it, watering it. But if you, let's say you spend two years with the plant and you're like, oh, this plant must be a really healthy plant, but you've not done nothing with it. That plant is dying, even though you've been with that plant for two years. So same thing with a relationship. The longevity of a relationship actually does not affect the quality of the relationship. So if you are wanting to be with the one, this is a conversation to have with your partner and talk about what does the one mean to you and how can Mm -hmm. we be that for each other? Right. I love that so much. And, you know, I think it's it's a slippery slope to like be in this maximizer culture that we're all in. You know, I feel like Amazon has totally fucked us. They even get anything anywhere at any time. And there's always yeah, two day shipment. And there's always a bigger, brighter model out there. But I feel like if you do apply that to dating, you're going to just be in a perpetual loop on dating apps and always looking for something better and someone that gets you a little more is a good fit. It's better to, you know, again, it depends. Like if you have that foundation, that's very different than if that foundation is not there. But all intents and purposes, that foundation is here for this question. Mm -hmm. If you have that foundation, then how can you work to secure it and water that plant like you were just saying, UA? Yeah, we got to keep watering that plant and make that plant our own. And I think it's unfortunate that these rom-coms will show you these scenes of love at first sight. And, you know, just I have this feeling about this person that they're my soulmate. I love that too. Julie certainly (laughs) loves that being the romantic that she is. But we also have to be realistic and know that when Mm -hmm. you're doing life with someone, it goes beyond an hour and a half rom-com. So think about that in your your relationship. Instead of thinking, is this a person the one for me? Is like, how can I do life with this person? I think that's a better question. And can you do conflict with this person? I always think back to the Connor Beaton and Vienna Farron episode we did, how to have a healthy relationship. And we ended up talking about conflict the entire time. Yes, they were like, that is the number one thing. And we learned this from Dr. Alexandra Solomon, too. And this was a huge light bulb moment for me that every couple has conflict. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're just running away from conflict, it's going to show up in the next person or the next person just in a different way. And the more you can just learn to resolve that conflict and be a team that resolves it, that to me is a sign that you found the one or created the one. Because inherently, it's combining two people that have different ways of thinking, different ways of doing. Conflict is going to come up inevitably. So can you look at your relationship and say, do I have the skills that make relationships work for the long haul? Yeah. Speaking of running, the way I know my relationship works right now is that instead of running away from each other, we run towards each other, especially in times of conflict. So Mm -hmm. if you're looking for a gut check of whether you're with the right person is in times of conflict or hardship, does your partner run towards you? Are you running towards each other? It's so easy to leave a relationship and say that wasn't the one (laughs) that that wasn't the right one for me. But you're constantly going to find that you're not with the right person if you keep running away. Right. So really think about how you and your partner approach conflict, like Julie said, and approach the tough times, because during the easy times, during the fun times, you're always with the right one because it's fun. (laughs) Well, I think that's a really good point too, is like as a relationship progresses, there's more and more of these life moments, you know, like how do you feel? We call it the Sunday test. When you're doing absolutely nothing on a Sunday, you're just sitting on that couch. How do you feel when it's not the like the new restaurant or the hot bar, like whatever, like something that's more of that external stimulus going on? I think that's a really good benchmark to 
can you just talk about anything? Like, does it have to feel on all the time? Those mm-hmm. are all really important traits to look for when you're evaluating if this person could be it for the long haul. So I'm not going to use the word the one. Yeah, there is no the one. There's so many. There's so many people who could be compatible for you. There's also so many people who could be bad for you. And the yeah. point of dating is not to find just the one is to find someone who's willing to do life with you and willing to confront conflicts with you. And that's not everybody. That's why we, I guess maybe that's why we call it the one, because so few people are willing to go yeah. through this. So when you do find someone who's willing to, I guess you can call that quote unquote, the one. Yeah, I think it's committing every day, right? Just committing yeah. to being together and to doing what you need to do and being there for that person. And if you see that, that is a sign that you're with the right person. And, you know, there's so many signs. I think I'd rather this listener reframe it instead of the one signs I'm with the right person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that can be like, do I feel like myself with this person? Do I feel like they support me? Like things that are essential in a partnership. And maybe that's a good checklist that we can all make right now. If you are with your friends at brunch, maybe just (laughs) make a list of all the things that you want to feel around the right person. And for me on that list is I want to feel desired. I want to feel Mm -hmm. respected. I want to feel safe. I want to feel seen. I want to feel confident. I want to feel beautiful. That's Mm -hmm. already six right there. Yep. Don't worry. I have it in my notes of my phone. Exactly my list. Oh, sure. <laughs> because I think <laughs> I was like, let me pull it up right okay. now. But I think this is really important because it helps you focus on the good things about someone. It's easy to like let your mind wander of yeah, could they do this a little differently? Or is there someone out there that would do this in a way that makes more sense to me? But how can we start to just focus on what's good about the person? And I think having it in your actual phone as a list item Such a you good know idea. i think yeah like i think the ones i have is like support like to feel supported like whether mm-hmm. that's you know professionally or even just in everyday life like a partner yes. to go through life with cared for someone mm-hmm. that you know i know has my best interests in mind and wants to be there for me intellectually satisfied like i can talk to them mm-hmm. about anything and everything that they're like my best friend that friendship is at the core of it Mm-hmm. You know, those are some of the ones on my list. Uh, safe and secure, have a true partner, content, like mm-hmm. feeling content, at ease. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that I can be my true self. That's my list. That's a great list. What an awesome idea to keep in your phone. All I have is my grocery list on my phone. So <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> reshift my priorities a little bit. Uh, but that's a great that's a great reminder. Yeah. And I think like for people that don't have a partner, making that list ahead of time, mm-hmm. not making the list of their six feet or their, you know, a slim build or whatever, like those lists we don't need to build. <laughs> yeah. Like having a list of like what you want to feel with this person is essential to help you be objective when you're dating. But then for people that have that partner to remind you of like what this person brings to your life. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if you're really feeling like some of these items are falling short, that's something you work together to create. And then if you really can't create it, then that's a sign that you're not with the right person, not that there's another one that's out there that you are doing what you can communicating what you need to your needs and you know letting seeing if they meet you and want to work with you and commit to it together i am so excited to talk about our partner osea you've probably heard me raving about this product but i seriously cannot get enough feels like i'm having a spa day in my home every time i use their andaria algae body oil i love how it visibly firms my skin and leaves it feeling silky soft and unbelievably glowing and it's the smell too It just makes me feel like I'm at the spa because it smells like summer, bottled with all natural uplifting notes of mango, mandarin, grapefruit, lime, and cypress. I also love that with Osea, I never have to choose between my values and my best skin because it's all vegan and cruelty-free. And also mother and daughter founded. Get healthy, glowing skin for summer with clean vegan skin and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping for orders over $60. Head to 
O-S-E-A Malibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Yay, it's summer, my favorite season. And you know what can make summer even better? Via hemp products. Need to chill out after a long day in the sun? There's a Via gummy for that. Dealing with anxiety or stress with summer travels? There's a gummy for that. Want to set the mood in the bedroom? Mm, there's a gummy for that. And that is actually my favorite gummy from Via. I'm talking about their best-selling High Love Gummy, a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a medium dose of THC all into one one mind-blowing gummy that will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I know it's meant for sexy time, but here's a little trick for you. I actually just love taking it for some of my longer walks. It makes all my surroundings look, smell, and feel so nice. And if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of THC-free gummies. Whatever you want to be in the mood for, Via has something for you. If you're over 21 years of age, you can get 15 percent off plus a free pack of award-winning gummies with our exclusive code DATABLE at viahemp.com. That's spelled V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. And don't forget to use the code DATABLE to get 15% off and a free pack of their award-winning gummies. Let's hold that thought for a quick message. Are you out there in the dating world searching for that long-term forever kind of connection? Whether you're riding solo or in a fresh relationship, I've got the perfect podcast just for you. It's none other than Sexology hosted by the amazing Dr. Nazanin Mawali, a psychologist and certified sex therapist. On Sexology, Dr. Mawali deep dives into everything about sexual health and relationships, giving you profound insights about the mysteries of love and intimacy. From unraveling emotional bonds to tackling sexual hurdles and boosting your sexual well-being, there's no podcast quite like sexology. One of my recent favorite episodes was No Question Off Limits, A Sex Educator Tells All. My mind was truly blown. But wherever you start, each episode is jam-packed with incredible strategies and eye-opening insights. And don't forget to catch up on some of the past episodes, such as what it means to be bad in bed, what exactly happens at a sex club, and how to become an expert in sexting. No matter where you start, this podcast will inspire you to view sex and intimacy in a whole new light, guiding you through your relationship journey with confidence. Tune in every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast fix. And if you haven't been in that many relationships or haven't dated that much, think about the three people in your life you're closest to, or you love being around, and then think about why you like being around them. How do they make you feel? I love being around my mom because I feel like she supports me no matter what that unconditional Mm -hmm. love is there and she's freaking hilarious so she makes me laugh so think about not just the the romantic relationships but just the people you surround yourself with that those are the characteristics that you're really looking for combined in your Mm -hmm. ideal partner I love that. I love that. Because yeah, like I think so often we put this, you know, emphasis on the romantic partner that this person Mm. needs to be X, Y, and Z. And like, sometimes it's not even stuff that we actually need in a partner. No, like it's things that we've been told or make an attractive partner. But if you actually look at like the people you surround yourself and your friends and family, maybe they don't even have those traits, but that doesn't make Mm -hmm. them less people. And that's what you can really use as your North Star of things that matter, that is what makes you feel good in the company of others. Having that list keeps it real for you. I just think about the guy I thought was the one for me and my mom <sighs> called me and said, would you really want to be with someone who does not return your text messages? Right. Who does not right. want to commit? To- my word for this year has been harmony and how serendipitous that Equilibria, a woman-owned wellness brand, focuses on bringing your mind and body back into harmony. Equilibria offers science-backed products that have helped over 200 thousand women feel better. My go-to product is a daily Nutrigreens, which contains an immune antioxidant and detox blend, along with prebiotics, probiotics, and over 35 fruits and veggies. They support digestion, boost the immune system, boost mood and energy levels, and helps detoxify. 
detoxify the body. Admittedly, I'm not the best at reaching my recommended quota of veggies every day, but the daily Nutrigreens makes it so much easier to reach that goal. Plus, it tastes great, and I feel an immediate energy boost after. This is my travel hack of the year, which is taking daily Nutrigreens on the road with me so I can get my daily dose of greens even if I'm not home. Now, for our Datable listeners only, head to myeq.com and use the code DATABLE for 15% off Equilibria's daily Nutrigreens and much more. That's myeq.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout for 15% off site-wide today. You who does not want to do this or does not want to do that. And it was such a rude awakening for me to, to think, why did I even think this person would be the one for me? They'd be t- a terrible partner to me. So having that list as your North Star really is a good gut check. So you don't derail yourself from your entire love love experience. I so wish I had this list when I was so hung up on the fact that my ex was the one because the safe and secure, like right there, the fact that it was an on again, off again relationship should tell you all, right? That that is the definition of not safe and secure. And I think recognizing that instead of we get so attached to the story, especially if you had a meet cute and you know, there's this whole thing around it. (sighs) I definitely got attached to the story that we had. And I mean, even the on again, off again, there's these tropes love is not like a disney movie where you're like Mm. fighting a battle to like win over this person it shouldn't be this tumultuous like Mm -hmm. you know peaks and valleys type story like a hero's journey like this is your love life like it it doesn't need to be that way but i think we get so caught in what we think it should be like that we don't recognize when things are just safe and secure and calm and peaceful all the things that actually really matter Yeah, that's a good parting note for everyone. Even if you feel like you found the one or you kind of know what you're looking for in the one, it's good to always remind yourself why you're dating in the first place. Why are you in relationships? Why do you want to be in relationships? It's not for the storyline, or I hope it's not for the (laughs) storyline. The storyline is fun, but it only goes so far and it does not carry you through life. I hope that most of us want to be in relationships because we want to share share our lives with someone. We want to find someone who is always on our side, our biggest Mm -hmm. cheerleader, and then we can conquer the world together. To me, that's like the ultimate hero story (laughs) of being with someone. And that's where love really flourishes is when you're with someone, you're like, this person's got my back, no matter what, they've got my back. And just that constant reminder of why the fuck are we doing this in the first place? It's good. Yeah. No, I think that's super helpful. And I hope for this listener that wrote in, we can one, reframe what the one is. Yep. (laughs) So that's first and foremost. And second is like, can there just be a gut check that what's important to you and what is your why for this relationship? If all of that checks out and you feel good today, because that's all you can control, then you are with the right person and you can keep going, you know, hopefully for the long haul. But if that changes, changes, then you address it then, you know, like that's all you can really do. I encourage you to tell your partner too. let them know. Yeah. One-sided. Hey, I'm feeling like you're really good for me. Do you feel that way too? How can we better support each other? This is an ongoing discussion. We're not just sitting back judging someone and like, oh, he didn't take out the trash. Not the one. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you know, we've got to communicate. And especially if you haven't had a lot of relationship experience, you can bring it to that as like, hey, like this is where this is coming from like I just don't know you know and like let that person be there with you on this journey like that's part of it and like we said you know we've heard of a lot of people this relationship experience I feel like this continues to be something that's always brought up and you know in today's world where we are kind of putting relationships a little on the back burner sometimes for school Mm -hmm. and careers and building a life outside of relationships oftentimes we do find ourselves at one point of being like, fuck, I'm in my first relationship and I'm way older than yeah. I thought I was going to be. It's yeah. not high school anymore. It's my 20s or 30s or 40s or whatever. And I think it's easy to be like, I'm behind. I don't know how to be in relationships. This isn't something I do. But that's just a story you're telling yourself. For whatever reason, your life unraveled in a certain way. And that doesn't make you more or less capable of being in a relationship than anyone that's been in hundreds of relationships. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, 
thanks for sending in that question. We hope you all are having a wonderful brunch. And again, let's keep this going. We love the questions coming in. You can email us hello at datablepodcast.com or find us on Instagram, DM us at datablepodcast. We check that quite often. Or you can, I don't know, drop a line in in our Facebook community, Love in the Time of Corona by the Dateable Podcast. Come on, let's keep that going too. You can reach us in so many different places, but we know you have burning questions. So ask, (laughs) ask away. And remember to subscribe in case brunch is early next week. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Surprise, surprise. All right, we're going to wrap up this episode. See you all next week for a brunch talk. See you next week. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Before you leave this episode, just a reminder to head over to datablepodcast.com slash programs if you want to get in on our Meeting People IRL Masterclass and see what else we have in store.